It's only on 62. This thing welds better than I expected. Wow. Oh, boy. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. This whole frame, going all the way over there, completely welded by this little bitty thing. Big as my hand. That's crazy, ain't it? Hey everybody, I've got me one of those little tiny welders. This is called a, whatever, safe, Safaspi? I don't know. Got it on Amazon. Um, if you're curious, I am making parts for this. And by the way, if you watched a previous video and seen us get this from eBay, it is a Blue Eddy expansion battery, minus the plastic box, controller, all the junk with it. So, all right, uh, 45 Empire. So I'm going to be grabbing some of these Harbor Freight Quick Strikes, um, Chicago Electrics. I've got piles of these and a few, uh, I don't know what those are, um, 70, 7018s, I believe. And we're going to take this outside and give it a shot, see what it's all about. I got my little Yes Welder helmet, new battery put in it. And if you ever wonder how that works out, well, you got to pry that thing open in there. And that's how you do it. All right. So let's see. Let's take this out. Crack it open. It's a little bitty thing. Look. Tiny. All right. So this is one of those little bitty cheap ones. Look below the video. I'll put a link to it. And right here, I'm going to put the page, the, the whole page of, I got this months ago, but I'm going to put a whole page and you can go in there and read the specs on it or whatever. Just go find the link, go read the specs. But here it is. So that's pretty simple. It's a little box, a little buzz box. Um, <laughs> how good is it? We're about to find out. So my hands are already dirty. I set up a couple pieces of metal right here. I've got some, here, there's some junk here left out here. And um, there's a piece we cleaned and welded the other day with the MIG. Um, I've got a pipe for a wind turbine. So here's the pipe. It's been cleaned, you see. And I don't know how perfectly square it is, but we will adjust that when we lay it in this track for mounting a 600, yeah, 600 yeah. watt wind turbine. So we're in the process of doing that. And this is how I do it. I preheat these, even though that is monstrously thick at a half inch. I think this little welder might be able to do it. All right. So let's get this thing opened up. Pull out my very fast. Oh, too much. Uh, and we'll get it cut open. All right, so I think this thing was like $68 or something like that. And who knows what it is now. These things swap around prices like people do underwear. So, well, good people in here. All right. So this is a little bitty booger. I mean little. I mean little, guys. Look at this thing. This is little. Look at this. Got some, you've got some embedded foam in a cord. But there it is. It is tiny, micro. Now, how much will it pull? I don't know. I'm going to want to try one of these later on on a uh, power station today i'm just running it off the main inverters in the house so i've got the uh heavy cord 12 gauge cord run over to it and it feels about like 14 is probably what's in here i would say what's it say here um 16 this is 16 gauge i don't know if you don't get that in the picture there can you see it 16 not really 1300 watts basically right there yep all right so yeah I don't know, man. For 60 bucks, will it weld? <sighs> will it weld basically anything from 18 gauge to quarter inch? That's the question. That's what I'm needing. But I brought this out here, that big hub in that piece of Schedule 40 pipe. We're going to find out, will it, will it actually penetrate for that? Now, you do have to preheat those with a map gas torch like I'm going to do. And that is going to be how we're going to weld that. So let's get this all set up. It comes with... Uh, cheapy, cheapy, cheapy cord set. So let's uh, try to cut them without cutting the cord in half. Okay. All right. And I just want to get one of these kind of like keep in the bed of the truck because I always keep that uh, big all powers back there. And that all powers did run a, a welder. It didn't run it great, but it ran it. And I'm like, well, that's what we want to make sure we do. Okay. So there's your there's your uh, cord for your ground. Looks like about three, 
I don't know, a little over, just barely over three feet long, a meter. That's what you're going to find it to be, I'm sure. A meter long. And we'll put that, let's see here. I'll just put that right there. And we're going to reach over here and we're going to get that in. Now, it's claiming that there's your ground. And apparently, because it's like it is, it's sure, surely reversible. So clockwise to lock in. And then we're going to grab this, which is about one and a half meters long. That's all it is, about one and a half meters. So not very long. But if you're just going to do a little weld up on an exhaust or something like that, this is probably just perfect for that. Now, as I showed you in there, we've got our uh, 6013 1 16th diameter electrodes. Now, these things, they claim they, claim they can run uh, much bigger. See, 2.5s. And I think that's what it is. Yeah, 2.5. See, they got checked right there. But I never do use the rods that come with these, man, unless I want to, like, just for filler or something. But I've got some of these out. Some of these little 6013s, I think that is. Or no, these, no, I'm sorry. These are 7014s. So I got some 74. I got both. I got 7014s and 6013s. And if you'll notice by the clamp, it's only one sided. You see that? So when we're talking cheap, we're talking cheap. But does it work? That's the question, right? So we're going to go ahead and clamp in. And it looks like it only wants to give you a forward clamp position. See that? I don't like that too much. There's a side clamp position. A little bit of wiggle in there. I'm sure when you get scarred up a little bit from usage, it'll probably grab a little bit better. But that's my welding right there, 22 degree angle. I prefer that. All right, so we're going to give it a shot and see what it can do. Um, the manual says, let me get into the manual right quick. Is it speak of Chinese? Exactly. So once you've read the manual, be ready to start Thoroughly welding. Thoroughly read the manual. Just like, just like I just did. Yes. Now, it's got the... the uh, the dial in it doesn't have a down and off. The off on and off switch, apparently we just saw that when we came into it, is back here. Okay. Now, you can probably make you a little strap. See the little holes right there? If it don't have one already. I didn't see a strap with it. Did you see a strap with it? I didn't see one. All right. So, this one doesn't come with a strap on. That's a, probably a good idea. All right. But it is simple. It is dirt cheap. And does it really do it with 16 gauge? That's the thing. I think they said this is a, was it, 100 and... 120 amp, uh, 16 gauge. Uh, I'm gonna say 85, 90 maybe. Um, let's see if it's got decent penetration at that rate. Okay, so I'm gonna get over here, and we're gonna go ahead and plug her in. Now she might be hot, so where did I lay that at? Okay, good. All right, there's our power right there. And we're going to give her switch in the back. Oh. It clicked. It clicked. You hear the click? I hear the fan. I heard a click. I heard a click, too. <sighs> All right. So, there's 30. Let's see. That's at the bottom scale. It looks like it may be starting. Then it has over temperature, which is OC, over Celsius. <laughs> okay. And it goes all the way up. All the way up. All the way up to 120. So we're going to go ahead and set this because we're dealing with 11 gauge right now. This is 11 gauge. We're going to go ahead and set this down and see if it's a real true blue 75 because at 75, actually, let's just go 70. Let's see if it sticks. At 70 amps, that should weld just fine if it's if it's uh, as rated or as advertised, okay? So this is the, come back over here, show the name. This is the Sephaspi. Sephaspi. You see them Zephyr at speed. Yeah, you do. Some of them are built slightly different. So if this one works good, you probably want to target this one. If it don't work good, you probably don't want to target this one. It's kind of wise, ain't it? All right. Now, make sure you block all activity of the phone with your eyes there. I'm just going to close mine. Good. Huh. See if my brown come loose here. Nope. There we go. Oop, blow through. 70's too high. Let's go down to 65. Don't go and catch easy, does it? It's not a quick arc. Hey, 
wasn't too bad, actually. I just welded on the open steel because that's an angled cut. Let's, let's go on overlay. So at 65, it's actually burning through. Holy hell. I didn't expect that, guys. It's powerful. It's actually, well, that's a little more than I thought. Yeah. All right. He's a wood fall. <laughs> yeah, I know it. We got the concrete forms over there falling over. All right. So let's go ahead and pull that loose right there. Let's take a look. See, my rod's out of the way. Good. All right. Let's bring this down here on the ground. Oh, look at all the dimes. Oh, I had somebody tell me the other day, says, you don't lay enough dimes. Oh, well, those are some dimes. A couple of nickels in there. Looks like a half a quarter. That's about, what, 68 cents. Not bad. So, did it penetrate? That's the big question I want to find out, though. How deep now? Now, remember, I'm just doing a seam. Okay? No angles. <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, look. Look, hey, what? look. Turn it back. It went all the way through, yeah. Yeah, I can see that, that. That's what I'm saying. This did better than I freaking thought. Careful, we're going back to the phone. <laughs> ah, damn. Ah. <laughs> Whoa, baby. 70% of that went all the way through. Easily. At 65? Wow, hey, that did good. All right, all right. So hold on just a minute. You did good on that, huh? Hmm. Just a minute here. Um, <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and heat this up. All right. So I'm going to be taking my map gas. Look underneath here. You want the if you get these, get the Benzomatic eight thousands. Okay, or four four thousands or eight thousands. Don't buy that cheap Chinese crap. This is this these are good. They're a lot better. All right. Now, I'm going to heat this up. We're going to get this good and preheated up to about 250, 300 degrees, probably in the 250 range. And that way, embedding the uh, the metal into it, it'll actually carry the heat through a lot better. All right. If you don't preheat them, you won't get enough penetration in this. Okay. So we're going to set this up. I'm going to pre-treat it, uh, preheat it for the weld, for saturation, and then we're gonna see, well, that thing actually weld onto this for a wind turbine base. So this is the hub that goes on a wind turbine right here. And this is commonly how I weld them up out in the field. If I do one in the field at all, this is how I do it. I set on a couple piece of angles, like that on the block, and I just do them like that, and I preheat them, and then I use a 160 MIG to weld them. And it does a hell of a job. I've never had a wind turbine blow off. So let's see if this little thing here can give it a deep, heavy weld after I put some serious temperature in there. And you're gonna say that's cheating. Man, that's half inch thick. This is this is a quarter inch thick. We've got to get this warmer than we do this. This is old welder's trick, guys. If you didn't learn how to do this, you're screwed up in school. Alright, I'm gonna throw my hood on right quick. We're going to see how well this thing will hold two spot welds so I can lay it in a tray, okay? So that's one of the things you always want to be sure of is you can get at least two spot welds there. Up here, I'm going to go ahead and set this thing up to 110. That's what I normally do it with with my box welder. And we're going to get that thing centered up. Believe it or not, you don't have to be 100% perfect with this. And if you guys ever get a wind turbine... I would say that it's easier to just take your work to a muffler shop for about $45 and get it done, okay? All right, let me get this over here. Get us our clamp on it. Try to get me centered here. And I'm using that already used rod, so let's hope that I'm close, right? First time shop. Just now. You just burned through it? With this. Are you serious? No, I'm serious. No, I'll bleep that part. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't expect that. Let me uh, stay on there. Let me rod up just a second. 
Because I'm burning through, burning through rod pretty quick. I kind of like this thing already. <laughs> oh, there we go. Get my clamp back over there. Now, oh. south side. There you go. Right next to my clamp. Oh, I burnt through again. Let me turn that damn thing down. It usually takes 110 or more. Let's try it again. You can't lift up as easy with this because I'm leaning over it. Wow. Holy hell. This will get replaced. All right, come on over here. All righty, let's take a look here, okay? Get Cure to wake up. Ooh, warm, that's, that's a lot. That thing could have a lot of heat. Oh, give me Horrible weld. That looks a lot better. Got to pull. I pulled back on the damn thing because it was burning through. Wow, that thing's a hell of a welder. I'd be damned. Guys, that's a lot stronger than I expected. I mean, a lot stronger than I actually just expected. Um, well, I guess, um, I guess it did better than I expected, guys. Um, and that was in 96, and it still um, blew a small hole through of uh, Schedule 40, which I didn't think it was supposed to be able to do. It just did. Cespi. Man, if it didn't take so long to do a video welding this whole thing up, I would, guys, but I'm not even going to go get the MIG. Yeah. All right. This is good. This is good. It's loud. This little fan. It's loud. It's very portable. Wow. Cheap, 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 cheap. But seems to be good. You guys, do it yourself. That was a whole lot of weld going on to that. And it's stuck. Look at that. To that. To that. Look at my finger. Stuck well. All right. 